On a scorching summer morning, history trembled beneath the fiery mushroom cloud of the world's first nuclear weapon detonation. It was July 16, 1945, in the barren deserts of New Mexico. The United States had successfully unleashed the unimaginable power of the atom and with it the dawn of a new era. One marked by both unparalleled potential and the looming specter of destruction. News of this groundbreaking event soon reached President Harry S. Truman, who during the Potsdam Conference in Germany casually informed Joseph Stalin, the leader of the Soviet Union, that America possessed a powerful new weapon. Truman likely believed he was sharing a revelation, but Stalin's stoic demeanor belied the truth. He already knew. A sophisticated network of spies embedded in the heart of the West had delivered the secret long before Truman's announcement. The story of the Soviet atomic bomb begins years earlier with an unlikely hero. In the late 1930s, as the world hurtled toward war, a keen-eyed physicist named Georgi Flyorov was stationed in the Soviet Air Force. Flyorov was not just a scientist, he was an observer of patterns, and one particular anomaly caught his attention. The sudden silence in Western scientific publications about nuclear research for years, physicists from Germany, Britain, and the United States had openly discussed nuclear fission. But by 1939, the discourse had all but vanished. Flyerov's intuition told him something significant was afoot. In 1942, he wrote to Soviet leadership imploring them to prioritize the development of atomic weapons. His letters highlighted the urgency of nuclear research but it was the broader context of global scientific advancements and wartime pressures that ultimately spurred Soviet action. Recognizing the potential of this new technology, Stalin approved the creation of a dedicated nuclear research program, placing Flyorov in charge of the newly established Laboratory of Nuclear Reactions. It was the first step in a journey that would reshape global geopolitics. While Flyorov's laboratory focused on theoretical research, another avenue proved crucial to the Soviet nuclear effort, espionage. During the war, Soviet intelligence agencies deployed an extensive network of spies across the United States and the United Kingdom. These operatives, many of them idealistic scientists sympathetic to communist ideology, smuggled classified information directly to Moscow. One of the most significant contributors was Klaus Fuchs, a German-born physicist working on the Manhattan Project. Fuchs provided detailed blueprints and technical data that accelerated the Soviet program by years. Other operatives like Theodore Hall and the Rosenbergs played similarly critical roles. While this covert flow of information gave the Soviet Union a head start, it's important to recognize the expertise and innovation of Soviet scientists who independently overcame numerous technical challenges. Despite the influx of intelligence, Stalin initially treated the atomic bomb project with skepticism. Resources were limited, and the Soviet Union was still reeling from the devastation of World War II. The project was assigned to Laboratory No. 2 near Moscow, under the leadership of physicists Anatoly Alexandrov and Igor Kurchatov. Yet for years, progress was slow hampered by Stalin's reluctance to divert resources from more immediate military needs. The tide turned in 1945, following the American bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The sheer devastation wrought by these attacks galvanized the Soviet leadership. Stalin, who had once been indifferent, now demanded swift and decisive action. Kurchatov was given unprecedented authority, and the project received the full backing of the Soviet state. One of the greatest hurdles facing the Soviet program was the procurement of raw materials, particularly uranium. The Soviet Union established its first uranium mine in Abosar, Tajikistan in 1942. But domestic reserves were insufficient to meet the program's growing demands. To address this, Soviet authorities turned to newly occupied territories in Eastern Europe, where they seized control of uranium mines in Czechoslovakia and East Germany. The labor-intensive mining operations often relied on forced labor from the Gulag system, a grim testament to the regime's determination. Meanwhile, Soviet scientists worked tirelessly to replicate and improve upon the designs obtained through espionage. By 1946, Kurchatov's team had achieved a major breakthrough, the successful operation of the Soviet Union's first nuclear reactor. This reactor produced plutonium, the critical ingredient for the bomb, 
At the same time, the design and testing of the weapon itself were underway at a secret facility known as KB-11, located near Arzamas. After years of grueling effort, the Soviet Union was ready to unveil its creation. On August 29, 1949, in the desolate steppes of Semipalatinsk, Kazakhstan, the first Soviet atomic bomb codenamed RDS-1 was detonated. The explosion, nicknamed First Lightning, was a resounding success producing a yield of 22 kilotons. The bomb's design closely mirrored that of the American Fat Man bomb, thanks to intelligence gathered by Soviet spies. The test sent shockwaves around the world. Western intelligence agencies caught off guard by the speed of the Soviet achievement scrambled to assess the implications. American experts had estimated that the Soviets would not develop an atomic bomb until at least 1953. The reality was a stark reminder of the Soviet Union's growing technological prowess. President Truman publicly acknowledged the Soviet test on September 23, 1949, marking the beginning of a new phase in the Cold War. The nuclear monopoly that the United States had enjoyed was over. In response, the U.S. accelerated its own weapons programs, leading to the development of the hydrogen bomb and a spiraling arms race that would define the latter half of the 20th century. For the Soviet Union, the successful detonation of RDS-1 was not just a technological milestone, it was a declaration of global power. The atomic bomb became a cornerstone of Soviet strategy, both as a deterrent and as a symbol of national pride. Yet, the costs were immense. Economic strain, environmental devastation, and the moral burden of harnessing such a destructive force. The Soviet Union's entry into the nuclear age reshaped the geopolitical landscape. It established the country as a superpower capable of rivaling the United States and ensured a precarious balance of power through mutually assured destruction. At the same time, it underscored the lengths to which nations would go in pursuit of security and dominance. The story of the Soviet atomic bomb is one of ambition, ingenuity, and sacrifice. It is a tale of brilliant scientists, shadowy spies, and a leader who, despite his paranoia, recognized the transformative power of science. Above all, it is a reminder of the dual-edged nature of human innovation, capable of creating both unparalleled destruction and profound progress.